In this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, segment nuclei with a statist model that you've trained uh, with, with new data. So we just did the training. So now I can close this notebook, shut it down, and I can um, open the running 2D to uh, segment the images with the, uh, the model we just got. So input directory is going to be uh, the test one. It group model, so we have with and without the uh, transfer learning, and we saw that with transfer learning it was better. So uh, I'm going to use this one. And then we need to define an output directory, which is not defined yet. So go back to my folder. And here in data sets, what it looks like, I'm going to go to the folder. I'm going to call results. Right? And I'm going to select it here, results. And so we, in, in this book, here we have one, um, one parameter. It's going to be the probability threshold. And I guess I can decrease it, let's say, to uh, 0 0.2, for example. And I'm going to run it. That's pretty fast. So as for UNET, first one is a bit longer but because it needs to load the model, and then it's uh, pretty fast. And then both these images are, are quite large, uh, 1868 by 1400. You see, it goes pretty fast. Now, you can have a look at the results that you got here. So if I go in results, but the great thing is that now we directly get um, the nuclei because it does uh, the instant segmentation directly. I can use the glass beyond dark. And this is the kind of results we get. And we can see that already for the epithelial cells, it seems to do a better job than before. Even in region where we don't have signal, it can try to guess something. Uh, so that looks promising. Now, I'm going to show you how you can uh, also save these models to be run in the Fiji plugin. So it's very similar to what we had before. I'm going to go back to Anaconda prompt. I'm going to kill everything by uh, doing Control C twice. I'm going to deactivate my virtual environment and activate the environment with TensorFlow 1. Return notebook. So it's going to open it so I can close those two notes. Right? If I go back to local, start is there is something which is so a notebook which is called Saving Model for Fiji plugin. So I'm going to open it. And it works like the other ones. So here, there's only one parameter which is the uh, folder where we have uh, the train models, we're going to use the one with transfer learning. And now I can save it. And so, you know, as before, we have a bunch of warnings and, and messages. But if I go back to my folder now, if I go to Stardust models and the one with transfer learning, now there's this zip file with uh, which is called TF saved model, and that's uh, something we can use directly in the Fiji plugin. So let me go back to Fiji. I'm going to open uh, So this one, for example, and now I can call the Stardust plugin, right? Which is so as before. Uh, but now instead of a pre trained model, I'm going to choose model zip from file. So the normalization, we use the same. So we can keep it as is. Uh, I'm going to keep 0 0.15 for the probability and 0 0.1 for the other lab threshold. And now I'm going to choose the model. So if I go back to desktop local stardust models, the one with transfer learning, there's a zip file that we just generated. And open it. Now I can run it.
It was in advance, you know, but what can I have later for the tickets? And this corresponds to the results uh, obtained with the studies model, which one? And so we can now, uh, we can also try to compare to our model. So, you see, before it, it was it tended to other segment cells that uh, epithelial cells and for example in this area which is you know, definitely difficult uh couldn't find anything now it it finds a nuclear and it seems to make sense so of course the signal is not good enough to uh, have an uh, interesting that probably does uh, i would say a decent job here uh, so obviously you don't want these kind of images, but it's interesting to see what it can do in this region as well. It's, it's impossible to know here. You have to guess. And so that's what it does. It guesses something which is definitely not true, but it's not a bad guess, I would say. And so um, now we can also, so we can Compare this, let's just uh, create an image. So if I go to image overlay and flatten, create an image here that is an RGB image with segmentation. Now we can uh, again um, launch the Stardust model. Gonna be here. We mm -hmm. use this time different model because first time compare the results we get. Mm -hmm. This so now this are the results, and we saw that it was not that bad. So if I um, Again, flatten the other level and try to compare. So obviously, you know, when we look at this region, it's going to be extremely different. Now, this is what we get with the uh, train model we have with images that were, uh, you know, manually annotated from polyps. It has a better knowledge of what cells should look like in polyps. Uh, interestingly, we can go up here. You know, here we, you know, it's it's definitely not uh, easy to segment, and probably we don't get perfect results. But it makes more sense here. It's very interesting. Like here, it totally failed. And obviously, here it does a much better job. All this area, and generally, I would say for the epithelial cells, like if we go in that region. The return model definitely tends to other segment. And then go here, it's not that bad in terms of epithelial morphology, but here we have you know more elongated uh, cells that look what so what you have for epithelial cells. So by you know retraining uh, the Stardust model, we are able to do a much better job. And if we look at this area in particular here, you know the signal is not great, but we can still see some cells completely fails here the decent job here there are just those two areas pretty clear that this makes much more sense like this 